Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Pro Cycling Manager 2019 Women's Tour episode number eight. Uh, the riders at the end of their contract, only three McPherson, Major, Montreal, and, and it's our last day to renew with uh, Floyd's Leadville as our sponsor. We made it. The sponsor confidence is high enough. The 2021 budget would be the highest by staying with them. Uh, also, it's the only one of the three sponsors coming in that would keep us with the U.S. as the important territory, which of course we have all U.S. riders to start with as basically it's a local hometown team that's trying to grow into something. So best budget for next year, the only one with the U.S., but does not have the potential earnings of the other two. So there's a little up and down with that. But it absolutely makes sense to extend and stay with them for now. Dossier page. So we have 60 points to get after writers, which is good. Uh, here's our final tally on the dossiers that we've done. Emma White, we got up to 45%. It's not great, but it is something. She could be our number one target if it's affordable. And it's only going to cost us five points to go talk to her. Uh, so we will absolutely see if that is a possibility. Breakdown of the finances, breakdown of the state of the team currently, breakdown of the riders that have agreed to contracts with me, adds up to equal this. I have three riders going out. All three are going to be going out. They're, they're gone. We're going to replace them. They weren't good. Okay. 
So that's three vacancies. We already had more riders than we really had space in the races we've been participating in this season. I have agreed to contracts with nine riders. That would grow us by six. That means we go from 12 to 18 riders way more than what we have right now. Way more than what we need right now. But all of it is an upgrade, an improvement, progress. A couple of the riders are similar to what I have currently, and they would be definite domestiques. But they've got high potential. So they could develop quite a bit down the road if we hang on to them. They're cheap. I, I might... I might not sign them. We'll see. Some of them are more in this range and would contribute to the team and would help the team. And a couple of them are definitely better than what we have now. Elizabeth Harden is our best rider. She's a 63 mountain. She's been our everything this season and her best rating outside of her flat rating at a 69. Her best rating in any useful category, is a 63 mountain. Brookshire has been our second best. A 62 sprint, a 60 mountain. Youngworth, 61 sprint, 61 mountain. 68 stamina. That That's it. So anything is going to be an improvement. But who we take and why? <laughs> well, okay. Those nine riders, I'm not sure I can keep them all. A couple reasons. One, salary of all of them coming in, 50000 Salary of those going out, increased salary. What I think we can afford to go higher on and still be, you know, okay, because we're making a profit every month. And elimination of one key staff member who's expensive, I think we can afford maybe 40000 maybe 45000 The nine of them combined is fifty. It's 10000 a month. It's an extra 120000 over the course of a year. We're, we're going to get a little bumper pay during the off-season. A little bumper pay. But we start paying them in, what, October? No, no, November. Start paying them in November. So that money starts going away pretty quick. We need jazz traps, so there's one. <laughs> uh, France, that's the other one that cost us 15000 how much was France? That would be the one where we would definitely save the money if we didn't take France. Jastrab as a sprinter is going to give us a huge boost. But France. Heidi France. Oh, you're our climber. Oh, she's she's the one I need most of all. Okay, well then, we're spending that money. All right, of the rest, everybody gets pretty cheap pretty fast. That was thirty-one thousand, right there. We just spent thirty-one thousand. We just spent most of that budget. Uh, Malkova is very high potential and is just 4,000. Savage has high potential. Megan Kelly, double check where she was. Uh, Irod and Watabi could be passes. They were both super cheap, but very good potential. Maybe don't need that. And. Buke was the best potential of all, 
And I think Buke was actually better than either of these two, so... Because if we sign all of them, I think we're playing with fire for next season. I've gone through this with my career mode on the men's side of things, and it's worked out well. But that doesn't mean this will. We're going from absolute garbage to uh, maybe something kind of resembling competitive. But we're still going to be continental. It's not like we're going to get big paydays. And those two, that's that's a big pay increase. But unlike Elizabeth Harden, who's a 68 when they're 69s, Elizabeth Harden, her, her rating is in the flat bear door. She's not actually good for us. Buke, just a 58. I rude. Okay, Savage is a 66, though. Can climb. Can sprint. Okay, so we need to get Savage signed. Savage, definitely one of the better options out there. Okay, Madison Kelly was a 67 and is actually kind of capable of climbing. And not that expensive. So for us, that's that's a pretty hefty upgrade. So uh, Savage, Kelly, Malkova, Malkova as well. Okay, so Savage, Kelly, Malkova. Savage, Kelly. Malkova. Not just potential, though there is good potential in there, but definite improvement. That's another 11, 12, another 12,000. 13, really. So that's already 42. Um, might not be able to sign any of the remaining four. Doherty, Buke, I rode with Tabi. I might have to let those other four go. Anna Doherty is a 65. It's another 3,000 if we take her. Would be a useful sprinter. So would actually benefit us while the others are future riders. And I just can't afford to take any of them. Doherty, on the other hand, is just 3,000. Would join us as a sprinter. Would be able to lead out Jastrab. Franz can. Malkova can. Savage can. Anna Doherty. Unknown, lower potential, but not bad potential. That's the only one left. Uh, I'm not going to say the other three. Do we take that risk? Go one higher. Would put us at 43,000. And that's right in the limit of what I think we can maybe get away with. Look at those ratings one more time. All sprint, really nothing else. Good flat rating. Definitely. Would be a strong sprinting team, and then we'd have really just kind of the one climber uh, who'd have to hope can get results here and there. But you know, they're all going kind of straight to the top of the team, all 
of the writers were citing. 40 brought in five with three going out. I mean, that's still already increasing the size of the team by two. We're actually up to 27th on the index. Currently, that's Continental Pro. I don't think it's going to stay there, but... We'll do it. It's a big risk, but we'll do it. Uh, you know, you got to take risks in life. Otherwise, where are you going to be? You can just stay in the gutter if you don't uh, do something, if you don't go for it. I'm going to have to let those three go, though. Uh, three domestiques that we just can't. We can't afford to sign them. So, sorry, you three. Can't do it. As much as that hurts. All right, well, we push forward. Uh oh do I have to sign them? Do I not have a choice? We agreed to contract, therefore we have to sign a contract. It won't let me proceed. Um, oops. Oh, there's another uh, 7,000. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, well, uh, that that pushed me a little further than I wanted to be. We signed our three domestiques with amazing potential, and now the team is bloated and a bit overpriced for next season. Uh, I'm gonna have a hard time with uh, staff as well. Uh, we're gonna be letting go. Labarta Ignacio here, or Ignacio Labarta. Uh, we will extend the others though. It's too bad we could ditch the scout and get somebody cheaper, uh, but we're definitely not going to be able to retain this one. Definitely going to have a better team next season. Definitely going to have a bigger team next season. And you need to send them to a few more races just to get paid a bit more. So we'll have to try to get into whatever races we can just to fill out the calendar. We're into one of the final sponsor objectives of the year. Shouldn't matter. Shouldn't be a thing anymore. Here's the thing about sponsor objectives, and you can let me in the, know in the comments below uh, if you know differently on this. So, after the final day of July, it doesn't matter what you do. I've been in this scenario before where I've had a sponsor level, and then I've surpassed it before the end of the year, surpassed the level that I was at, that should have seen an increased budget. It didn't. It was the same. It was at the end of January evaluation for that year. And it made no difference going into that next season. So I did not see a boost. So it came down entirely to what had happened, right, up until the final day of July. I've never had it go the opposite direction, though. I've never had it decrease to a lower level is it still the same am i locked in already you already know that we barely made it into this level we've already had one sponsor objective since august 
come and go, and it was failed. It was failed miserably. And if we fail this one and fail this one miserably, I'm wondering if it's going to put us below the mark again. If it does put us below the mark, do we lose that money? I don't think it will. It should be locked in. But can it go down? I don't know. I, I suppose we'll find out if you already know that. If you've ever had it drop post, you know, August and beyond. We certainly can't afford to lose that 9000 though. That would be uh, pretty bad for us if that happened. Stage objective for this one is to finish uh, with a stage victory, which is the hardest thing to do. This is the last stage victory requirement on the season. Next season, we should be able to match, manage our sponsor objectives a bit better than this season. But this season, everything is tooth and nail. Uh, Elizabeth Harden, our top star, has a minus three race day condition. She has a sprained neck, and the weather is very hot for today. So she ended up with a negative three, brought her prologues down to a 59. And without her, we're going to really struggle in this race, period. I mean, it's, it's just going to be tough going. Our best was Youngworth in 19th, 24 seconds off the pace. 10k to go. Actually, 8.8 .8 now. We've got a little uphill swing right here. And then we level off for the uh, finish. A little bit of fatigue out there. Klaus, Youngworth, Harden, our favorites. And I think it's going to be Youngworth we're going to go for today. Uh, actually, Klaus second. And Harden. Montreal, Brookshire, Hickey. The teammates of the take off. Come on, get us out here. Last chance to do something. It's the final stage of this race. Six K to go. <laughs> Hickey, what's going on? You're that good on the downhill? Or Brookshire is just that bad. Brookshire is good on downhill, but Somehow didn't pull away at all. 3.6k and we're going to start sprinting now. 3k. Montreal. Harden. Klaus. Come on, come on. Youngworth. Klaus is still at the front. Youngworth's still there, but we're out of red bar. We're going to get a top three, though. Klaus takes third, Youngworth fourth, Harden fifth. Three riders in the top five. That helps with the result a bit. But in terms of stage victories, somehow they still see that as a failure. Uh, Chloe Diger is going to CCC Live, so they're going to be, that's a big boost for them. Picking up, picking up the best time trialist in the world. Yeah, see, we have dropped. Just hopefully that doesn't affect anything. We're still 29th in the index now, a half a month, but it's still pretty early in the, into the signing period. I would be shocked if we are Continental Pro next season. 
but that doesn't mean it won't happen. It's a long one today, and it's our next to last sponsor objective. And again, if there was any chance that it could drop, that's why I'm going to see what I could do in this race. Objective is top 10. We might be able to pull that off. We are in Utrecht, the most bike friendly city in the world. Uh, Montreal plus three race day condition, Klaus plus two, and if we look, Klaus, Klaus has leveled up. 64 in the sprint, 62 acceleration base now. Uh, 61 stamina, 60 resistance base. So Klaus has definitely leveled up. Was already our best sprinter, but has gone up a notch. We'll see how we do with these cobbles, though. Uh, there's not much, but... It really doesn't take much when you are this poor in ratings uh, to go down. It's a four and a half minute gap to the break, so there is a little bit of a threat there, but it's not up to us to chase them down, so hopefully uh, somebody else does so and appropriately. Very, very windy day, too. That's going to be a bit of a factor as we race uh, in and out of the city. Three-star objective on this one. Uh, no, objective cobble section. And here comes a back-to-back. -back. More. We've survived the worst of it. Gets a little better from here. But when will the pace pick up? Hopefully not until after we're done with the cobbled sections. Otherwise, I will start to lose riders pretty quickly. There was another one. Super fast. Survive another. And another. 90k to go. I'm liking this lack of pace right now because it is allowing us to survive. Just a couple cobbled sections left. Looks like we might just survive this. One to go. And we're past it. Fatigue isn't that bad. We're down to 60k, so this water will get us to the end of the race. And if the pace doesn't betray us, I think we could be well on our way to a top 10. I don't know how much better I could do, but top 10 anyway. Forty k. Starting to drift backwards a little bit. Let's speed this up. It's not blinking red, but we were definitely going backwards. Looks like it should have been blinking red. 30k to go. Fatigue starting to set in. Now we actually are seeing some blinking red. Speed up to handle it. One rider has been dropped so far. Uh, it looks like Schmid and Major are on the way to being among those out of the rear. And Breakaway has been caught. And we go under the 20k banner. Schmid is toast. Uh, Schmid, use your gel. Major, use your gel. Slight uphill. Done and over with quick. Okay, Spid's been dropped. 67 left in the peloton. P2 
Pace, not so bad. 10k to go. Alright, Klaus definitely going to be the sprinter. Montreal will lead you out. Brookshire. Bit of a negative today. Not feeling too well, but hanging in there. Uh, just noticed something. <laughs> McPherson, use your gel, and we'll follow you. But you're not going to last, and you're already back down the order a little bit here, so you need to just kind of ease your way forward for us. Brookshire's behind you. Okay, we got a little yellow. That's good. There's Brookshire, and Trill and Klaus. Come on, come on. Get on through. There you go. All right, we're in position. Here comes an attack. Brookshire, it's 6K to go. Brookshire is going to accelerate for us, not letting that breakaway get away. 5K to go. I'm gonna use the gels. Only five kilometers left. Uh, Klaus, where'd you go? There you are. 4K to go. Time to accelerate. Okay, full 99. 2.6. Two point two Montreal leading us out. Gonna be the first of the line today. One point four. Point three. One point one. Klaus, come on, come on, come on. Oh man, can you get a top ten? Can we get a top ten? This is scary close. Scary close. I think we have it. I think we have it. Lundmark wins. Out of the top five. Tenth. Oh. Oh, close. <laughs> Just enough. Now we've been so excited to get 10th place. Klaus, for a moment there, looked like an actual sprinter and then didn't. <laughs> We're not there yet. But next year's team, next year's team will be able to compete and will be freaking expensive for a team like us anyway. By the way, we're into the last spot. We're on the bubble of Continental Pro right now. Temporary sponsor confidence is looking good. Go forward that one day though. That's why I say temporary. That's our first objective met in actually a long time since pretty early in the season that we've actually achieved the objective. <laughs> We're back below. I hate how it does that. I really hate how it does that. Yeah, there you go. One half star. That was only a one and a half star. But since all the way back to the beginning of the season, three of the first four we managed to accomplish, but they were all top tens. They were more doable. I hadn't bothered with the last couple races, so I didn't do anything with those. But, or two of the last three anyway. But with just one left, it's another top ten. It's two and a half star. I don't see how hitting our objective didn't give us any bonus at all it's kind of odd that it did that but whatever that's going to do it for this episode on decathlon gamer thanks for tuning in be sure to hit that like button on some major strengthening of the squad to next season albeit at quite the cost I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there.
and bye for now.